So what we'll do in the next about um, 30, 35, 40 minutes is look at both viability and cardiomyopathies. Just try and understand some very basic issues that we can work with as far as um, uh, these issues are concerned and with um, MR. This is a short axis view. This is a two chamber view. These are delayed hyper enhanced images. We use inversion recovery for this. The white is the infarct. It involves the anterior wall and the septum. And you can see that very well. There's a little bit of black myocardium that you're seeing at the periphery, but the extent of infarct is more than about 75% of the thickness of the myocardium. Anybody, is, is this uh, viable or non-viable? This is non-viable, right? So that pretty much finishes the lecture. If you know this is non-viable, there isn't anything much that I need to do. So white is dead. All infarcts enhance five minutes after intravenous gadolinium. Please remember that MR is the modality that shows as an infarct. It's like, you know, ultrasound fetus, MR, spinal cord, these paradigm shifts that have occurred. In, as far as infarct imaging was concerned, it all started with MR. Potentially, therefore, all non-enhancing myocardium is, is viable. The key here, as far as viability imaging is concerned, is twofold. One is you need to get really good quality images. The second that thing that we really need to do is to basically um, be able to depict uh, the, the, the areas of viable or non-viable myocardium on, in a way that the cardiac surgeons and cardiologists understand and then actually make a recommendation of whether they should revascularize or not. Okay, So we have to assess the areas of systolic dysfunction, assess the absence, presence, and extent of infarction, and then make a comment on viable, non-viable myocardium. There is no preparation required. Uh, your technicians should know how to position the ECG leads, get a good ECG signal, train the patient into getting good breath holds because, you know, once you've done your four chamber, two chamber, short axis, delayed hyper enhanced, the poor guy or woman, in fact, we've had patients going into cardiac failure within because of the amount of breath holds that they've had to do be about 25 or 30 times. So it's not, I mean, if you had to do it, you would realize what it was. You then get cine images, you get your delayed hyper enhanced images, give intravenous contrast, and you must use this 0.1 millimole per kg body weight. I know we all sting on contrast, but don't do that for cardiac MR. You, you need to do this. If you want to make the patient pay more for contrast, so be it. The first thing that we do is get um, the haste uh, uh, black blood images, which give us a basic overview of what is going on here. Um, then you do the, um, uh, the localizers. Based on the localizers, we would then do the four chamber view, as you see here, the two chambers and the short axis stack. These are all uh, true FISP images. They're white blood images, and they give us a sense of the systolic function. Then we inject contrast, that is 0.1 millimole per kg body weight. We immediately do the delayed hyper enhanced images at this point for thrombus, for microvascular obstruction imaging, which you get with acute and subacute infarcts. This is again done in the four chamber, two chamber, and the short axis images. Then you wait for about two to three minutes. About five years ago, we used to try and do coronary artery imaging at this point when we didn't have, sorry, five years back we got our 64 slides, about seven years ago. And we used to fail most of the time, then we realized that you can't do coronaries on the MR. Um, and so you wait about three, four minutes until, since in, from the time of injection, there's been about five or seven minutes that's elapsed. Then we do the TI scout, which is a lovely sequence that was pioneered by Siemens. And you, at multiple TIs, you get these images. You choose, this is the image where the myocardium is the blackest, this or this uh, depends. You choose the TI time. You actually add 20 milliseconds to that because the TI scout is not perfect. And then you get these crisp, delayed, hyper-enhanced images. How do you know they are good? The black myocardium should be black. It should be completely nulled so that any white infarct would be very well seen. That's pretty much how the study is to be done. If it's done well, if the patient is cooperative, it should take all of about 35 minutes on the Sonata. If you have a faster machine like the Avanto, perhaps 25 minutes. 
How do we report global function, segmental function, you assess the delayed hyperenhancement and then you do the viability assessment. Global function, train your techs how to measure ejection fraction, it's a painful bum job, you love it in the first 10 patients and then it's com complete drudgery. Basically you have to draw these circles along the endocardium and epicardium from the base to the apex. You can use Argus function for that. Remember CMR is the gold standard for ejection fraction. If you know how to measure EF, if the echo report is, uh, is discordant, please don't manipulate your ejection fraction to be like the echo EF. All right, because the echo EF is always eyeballed. MR is more accurate. So stick to the MR and if you're having a tiff with the cardiologist or cardiac surgeon, say that I am right. Have the confidence to do that because very rarely does anybody measure on echo. It's all eyeballing. You look at it and say, haa, mere ko lagta hai pandra takka hai. You know, it's like you're in the share market, you know, pandra takka, bis takka. So, you know, don't. We, we are much more accurate. So let's stick with that. This is how we get the various values and we can report this off. The next thing to do is segmental function where we actually look at the short axis images and there is an AHA classification of 17 segments so we should say which of these segments is contracting well, which of these is not and you can see here this is the normal in this patient and you find here that there is an area of severe hypokinesia in the lateral wall, there is akinesia in the inferior wall. As you go towards the apical region, all the segments are akinetic. Now once we've done this, we should map it on a bullseye chart. So we have this scheme which is color coded, where you say what is akinetic is dark blue, this is I think green blue, depends on what it shows here, yeah, green is severely hypokinetic, white is normal. So, you know, you get a basic quick sense of what segments are normal or not. The, we do the same thing with the delayed hyper enhancement. So, once we get the short axis stack from the base to the apex, we look at the white areas and you decide what is the percentage of involvement of the myocardium. Anything greater than 50% is dark blue, the rest are color coded as light green and dark green. And again, you get a sense of what is delayed hyperenhanced or what is the extent of infarction. Then you do the viability assessment. <coughs> Clearly, <coughs> we now know that, um, um, you know, infarcted cells are non-viable, but the myocardium is called non-viable when there isn't enough uh, life tissue available to regain function after an infarct. So, <coughs> if you know that there is 70% of live myocardium available, then chances are that that segment which is not contracting after an infarct, after the LAD is uh, revascularized, will probably improve. But if you find that only 20% of uh, viable myocardium or black myocardium is there, or perhaps it's 0%, then revascularization will not help. So this is a chart. If your systolic function is normal, you don't have any area of akinesia, hypokinesia, then that's fine. There is nothing to be done. If you have systolic dysfunction, you look at delayed hyperenhancement. If there isn't any, which means there's no infarction, that means it's viable and hibernating and opening up the artery will help. If there is delayed hyperenhancement, anything less than 25%, it, it's as good as no infarct, it will improve. Anything greater than 50% is unlikely to improve. Between 25 to 50%, very broadly you can say there's a half and half chance of improvement and the surgeon or the physician should take a call based upon all the other extraneous factors, <coughs> uh, both medical and non-medical, as to whether the vessel needs to be opened up or not. You know that all cardiologists suffer from the oculostenotic reflex, right? Stent dekha to khachak, you know, you put in a stent. So. Um, all apologies to any cardiologists uh, uh, in the audience. But essentially, here you have a normal patient. You see on the short axis that all segments are contracting well and there is no infarction. But look at this patient. You have complete septal akinesia. Your septum is not contracting. As, uh, can you appreciate that? The anterior wall, lateral wall, inferior wall are contracting very well. The septum is not contracting at all. Yep. But you see here, there's no infarction. So when there is no infarction, there is no white myocardium, it means that 
if you revascularize the LAD, which obviously is abnormal, um, the patient has a very good chance of function in the septum improving. Here is another patient where you find that there's a less than 25% infarct, I think it's a shade too dark, but trust me, the, the very, very thin infarct along the inferior wall. And you can see here that the inferior wall shows severe hypokinesia. Can you appreciate that? The lateral wall is good, anterior wall is contracting well, and the inferior wall is not. Is that, is that understood? Can you appreciate that? Not a single... Yeah, okay, great, thank you. So that means that this is hibernating and it's potentially viable. Here is a patient who had an approximately 40-50% infarct. We said go ahead and revascularize. You can see here the moderate hypokinesia in the septum. And you can see after revascularization how the function has improved, um, you know, because there was a good chance that the patient's function would improve. So that is the call that cardiac MR allows us to take in terms of whether this patient should be touched or not. Here, this is the first patient where I'd shown you that stack of um, short axis images. You see here that most of the myocardium shows full thickness or greater than 50% infarct and most of the segments here are akinetic. When that is the case, it is unlikely that revascularization will help. This is non-viable myocardium and nothing really needs to be done.